June 6, 2024 marks the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion in Normandy. Now this event helped liberate Europe. It was the culminating event where all of the allied forces banded together to invade and repel the occupying force in France. And that's where the real fight started. So I got friends in the army that were like, hey, look, uh, we were gonna invite you out here to do a reenactment with us, but there weren't any Marines at D-Day, were there? And then I responded with, are you sure about that? So were there any Marines at D-Day? Were there any Marines on the invasion of Normandy with the army? Well, today we're gonna find out. But before we talk about that, I wanna talk about a little backstory to explain kind of the layout leading up to the invasion of Normandy. So in June of 1941, the entire 1st Marine Division moved into garrison at the newly established Marine base at New River, North Carolina. Major General Philip Torrey took command the same month and the division continued the serious business of expansion and training. Now I say all this because the 1st Marine Division actually trained the army on amphibious warfare before they went over there. Hmm, interesting. To give you a little backstory about the 1st Marine Division, they were activated aboard the battleship USS Texas on February 1st, 1941. It is the oldest, largest, and most decorated division in the United States Marine Corps. The division is compromised of Headquarters Battalion, 1st, 5th, 7th, and 11th Marine Regiments. 1st Reconnaissance Battalion, 1st and 3rd LAR or Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalions, 1st Combat Engineer Battalion, and 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion. These units represent a combat-ready force of more than 20,000 Marines and Sailors. So Marines were at Normandy. There was actually a total of 306 of them there. Now, obviously, the Joint Chiefs decreed that Europe was going to be an Army Combatant Command Theater, but they still sent some Marines with them. So the Marine Corps pioneered in the 1930s what is considered to be the greatest tactical innovation of the 20th century, the Amphibious Warfare Doctrine, which would take the Allied forces victoriously over every beachhead in World War II. Now Camp Lejeune, which is the Marine Corps' largest amphibious training base, was instrumental in developing, testing, and refining that doctrine. Elements of five Marine divisions would train there during the war, as well as tens of thousands of other Marines whose storied and historic battles in the Pacific are well documented. Of particular interest to this date being commemorated, however, is the fact that Camp Lejeune trained the U.S. Army's 1st and 9th Infantry Divisions in amphibious warfare prior to them executing the invasion of D-Day at Normandy, France. Funny. Hmm. So the Army learned how to conduct amphibious warfare from the Marines, which makes sense because the Marines had been doing it for decades before that and had a lot more experience in it. So it made sense to go to the Marines to be like, hey, look, teach us how to do this stuff because we're gonna be the major force that's going in there, not you. So we need to know how to do this stuff. And so they went to Camp Lejeune and they trained in amphibious warfare. On June 6, 1944, D-Day at Normandy, France, Allied forces stormed under the continent of Europe in a victorious and decisive assault that would precipitate the downfall of Germany. Spearheading the assault across Omaha Beach was the Army's oldest division, the 1st Infantry Division, also known as the Big Red One, which was accompanied by the 9th Infantry Division in the subsequent breakout from the coast. The 1st Infantry Division began its training at Camp Lejeune with the 1st Marine Division during the summer of 1941, only a month after the base's beginning. The 1st Infantry Division was followed by the 9th Infantry Division, which trained there for two months. Both Army divisions later used their Camp Lejeune taught amphibious skills in the landings at North Africa and also Italy. Their major test, though, was at Normandy on D-Day, where their success was in no small part due to the training that they received at Camp Lejeune. You see, here at Globo Gym, we're better than you, and we know it. Marines, incidentally, were actually at Normandy, only in small numbers, like I said, a total of 306, mainly because the Joint Chiefs of Staff had already decided that Europe was gonna be an army theater. It's been reported somewhat anecdotally that General Eisenhower had complained that if he had let the U.S. Marine Corps participate, that they would have taken credit for the success of the entire operation, which he's probably right. Additionally, it should be noted that the training of the Army's 1st and 9th Infantry Division wasn't Camp Lejeune's only contribution to D-Day. The U.S. Coast Guard, which arrived at Camp Lejeune with the 1st Marine Division in 1941, established its only landing craft school there, eventually at Courthouse Bay, where it stayed for five years, training landing craft crewmen in the most difficult and dangerous phase of an amphibious assault, the actual projection of the landing force on a hostile shore. 
Coast Guardsmen manned more than 2,000 landing craft in every major operation, both in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and were significantly present at Normandy. I bet you didn't realize that, because I certainly didn't know. I didn't realize the Coast Guard took part in Normandy. So, shout out to the Coast Guard. Okay, so I want to go a little bit more to detail about, like, what kind of an impact Marines had on the European theater, because oftentimes it's overlooked that the Marines did have an impact and actually participated in some of it, even though they may not have participated very heavily in the actual invasion of D-Day, they did impact the European theater, and I want to talk about that. Marines have become known for their beach landings and amphibious assault capabilities, and their overall fighting capability took an active role in teaching the Army infantry how to perform like their aquatic brother service, according to W. Thomas Smith, a former infantryman and freelance writer who wrote a number of historical articles, including Rivalry at Normandy. These landing courses had been taught to soldiers from Marines since the first landings in North Africa in 1942 and throughout the Sicilian-Italian assaults in 1943. While paratroopers from the 82nd and 101st Airborne and 6th British Airborne divisions dropped into occupied France, Marine detachments like the one on the USS Texas were on standby to assist the Ranger units in any way starting June 7th, D-Day plus one. A majority of the troops were experiencing battle for the very first time, regardless of what service they had joined. Most of the Marines had no combat experience and had only been in the Corps a few months. The same could be said of many of the soldiers who just landed. At the last minute, the Marines were told to stand down, either due to a shortage of men in the Corps or the chance of seeing a headline that read, Marines save Rangers at Normandy. Now, separately from this, a unit of 4,000 men were stationed at Reykjavik, Iceland, and occupied the neutral ground until January 31st, 1942, in response to the attacks to Pearl Harbor. Later on that year, Marines actually led Operation Torch through North Africa, which the landings took the detachments to the ports at Arzu and Algeria, according to Lieutenant Colonel Harry Edwards, a retired Marine and author of A Different War, Marines in Europe and North Africa. The Marines then moved over land to clear the port of Oran for more landings. Also on November 10th, 1942, the Marines aboard the USS Philadelphia landed at Safi, French Morocco, and secured the airport until the Army troops showed up the next day in support. Their fight did not end when the Navy carried the men over to Marseille, where detachments from USS Augusta and USS Philadelphia accepted the surrender of 700 German soldiers. Until the end of the war, men and women of the Office of Strategic Services, which is the predecessor to the Central Intelligence Agency, worked closely with Marines appointed to the agency. The OSS worked to form and develop rebellions and underground resistance fighters in many of the occupied countries, including France, Germany, Yugoslavia, Italy, Austria, Albania, Greece, Morocco, and Egypt. Despite the Pacific battles and iconic images that surface throughout the Pacific theater, Marines and the country as a whole should not forget the time, effort, and assistance that the Corps put into freeing the world from the regime in Europe in a battle that is known as an army victory. So, the point of all this being, Marines did have an impact on Normandy, they were at Normandy, and they had an impact on the war in Europe in general due to the fact that they were such an integral part of teaching the army how to conduct amphibious assaults and amphibious landings, which probably had a significant impact on the army's success at Omaha Beach and at, at the invasion of Normandy in Utah and everything. So while it was a group effort, and at the end of the day, one team, one fight, rah. But I just wanna make sure everybody out there knows that the Marines did have an impact and did participate in the invasion of Normandy, even if it might've been in a small way or in an, in an inadvertent way in some cases. In any case, since June 6, 2024, marks the 80th anniversary of the invasion of Normandy. If you have time to take a look, read up on the history and learn something about it because a lot of people lost their lives trying to take that, that piece of land so that we could get our foothold in the European theater. Because ultimately that was the whole reason we were able to end World War II in Europe was because we were able to get into France. The sacrifices that the Army made and that the Marine Corps made, obviously the Army sacrificed a lot more in, in blood for the invasion of Normandy. There's no way we could ever repay that. But it's because of the, the hard work, the blood and sacrifice that these people made that we're not all speaking German today. I would just urge you and maybe you take some time to be thankful for the hardworking men and women that came before us. Because if it weren't for them, life would be a lot different. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope we all learned something today. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments. If you're in the army and you wanna talk smack, you can let me know in the comments that as well. And I will see you in the next video.